Welcome to Heavy Metal Bake Sale. I'm Catfish. And I'm Seabass. And today we're going to talk about Forecastle Fest, uh, Waterfront Park in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, happened a few weeks back. Yeah, it's a pretty good time. Yeah, it was a good time, so let's just get into it. So, uh, early on Friday, I think the first show that we saw together was Rainbow Kitten Surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, that's the second time I'd seen Rainbow Kitten Surprise. Uh, but I think this one was way better than the first time I ever saw them, mostly because I paid way more attention this time. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, Aaron's real big into Rainbow Kitten Surprise, so I was pretty surprised with how good it was. Like, that dude's dance moves were insane. I don't know how he was twirling so much with a microphone cord and didn't, like, wrap yeah. himself up like a microphone mummy. I mean... It was amazing. Uh, the bassist was really getting into it. Yeah, that dude. And I didn't even know it was a dude at first. <laughs> That's true. Biggest, yeah. biggest uh, swerve of the of the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I really liked Rainbow Kid and Surprise a lot. And actually, I'm going to see him again in Cincinnati in a couple months, uh, just based on that show, because now I know more of their songs. So I want to check them out, kind of going into knowing what to expect. Uh, I agree. Uh, I saw Wax Fang now. I have never actually seen Wax Fang before, but I've listened to them before. Uh, they're a big local act in Louisville. They're pretty big in the local music community. Uh, they have a little bit of a different sound uh, than, I guess, a lot of more mainstream rock and right. pop fans aren't going to necessarily vibe with it at first. But I think after repeated listenings, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I didn't get to see them. I, I missed them. Unfortunately, I made it pretty late every day getting down there. So, yeah, they were also they were on one of the smaller side stages, right? Uh, but definitely, it was worth uh, checking out the WFPK stage throughout the weekend. Yeah, uh, a lot I, of smaller like sacks. A lot of the side stages had some of the. So they had some really good music. Um, the dude who's the conductor for Louisville Orchestra was actually playing in one of those, and it was a pretty mm -hmm. cool show. I went and saw that. They also had the uh, the West End Children's Drum Corps. Or something like that. It was the uh, something like that. It was uh, all these like little kids playing the drums. It was a lot of local stuff from West Louisville. It was a really cool. Uh, show. No, it was the West Louisville Showcase. Is okay, what, is what they called it, and that was a lot of fun. I believe that was on Sunday. Uh, some other bigger names that I got to see: uh, Kurt Vile and the Violators, and Father John Misty. Uh, I had a great time at both Kurt Vile and. Public yeah, time. I didn't I didn't know who Kurt Vile was when I went in there, but I was like, who's this dude up there playing two thousand dollar Les Paul guitars? Who who is this guy? And like, it was pretty good. I enjoyed it a lot, actually. Yeah, going into his show, I hadn't really listened to much of his solo work. Uh, I've been a War on Drugs fan for a while, and I knew he originated with them and a lot of their earlier work, and I was a big fan of that. And then I'd also stumbled upon him and Courtney Barnett did a album together and I listened to a lot of that when I was really getting into her and I was like oh well I hadn't actually listened to him solo going into it but I was really I was really uh yeah happy with the uh, show. Courtney Barnett that was another uh artist that I saw there that I didn't really know much about but it was pretty good um mm -hmm. I liked her a lot I didn't know much about her the reason that we actually went over there was because Jason Isbell talked about taking his daughter over to see that show after he got done so I was like mm, I like this guy so he's probably got pretty good taste in music I assume <laughs> <laughs> yeah I had just started like getting into her right before Forecastle because a buddy of mine recommended her so I hadn't listened to like her whole discography going in uh, but I felt like I had enough to go on to know what was happening and I really enjoyed uh, my time at the Courtney Barnett show I believe that was also that was one of the last shows. That was like the second to last show on Sunday. Yeah, it, it was, was pretty late. I it, think that might have been the last one I stayed for on Sunday, actually. But it was def it was definitely worth the uh, the wait. Definitely made Sunday worth it. Yeah, I, wore, I felt. I wore the fish flops, and that was a mistake by Sunday. <laughs> my knees felt so rusty. No, I didn't wear shoes for three days straight. <laughs> <laughs> Bottoms of my feet just raw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, your callus is probably like as thick as a driveway. I mean, I, that was really the goal going in. <laughs> was just have really thick callus feet by the end of the weekend. Yeah. Um. So, I saw Jimmy Eat World. You, you saw them too, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jimmy Eat World. Um. That one was for like twelve-year-old me, middle school <laughs> me. 
I needed to hear Bleed American and in and the middle live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. Like, that was high school for me. Like, <laughs> yeah, high, high school for you guys, elementary school, middle school for me. But I was like, ah, oh, little kid catfish needs to go see this right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, it looked like a bunch of dudes who were like, yeah, we got a babysitter so we can go play this song. But they really, they really did a great job. Uh, I thought anyway. Mm. I was pretty impressed by them. Yeah, I had a lot of fun at that concert. Um, we'll talk about the uh, the headliners. Uh, I only watched about of the three headliners. I really only watched um, Modest Mouse all the way through uh, because of timing issues and. An intense hunger for Waffle House. <laughs> yeah, uh, of the headliners, I didn't stay late enough on Sunday because of the fish flops. On Saturday, I got distracted by Value Mart's delicious bratwurst with macaroni and cheese on top, which I had invented, <laughs> and the dude gave it to me for free because he was like, "You're a madman," and I was like, "Yeah." In uh, Modest Mouse, I was I was extremely disappointed, and I did not stay for all of that. Uh, why, don't you, why don't you go ahead and elaborate on that? <laughs> well, the wonders of that show. I had a lot of fun at Modest Mouse. However, I understand <laughs> where your criticisms came from. Like, first off, it's, yeah, obviously it's hilarious when this dude starts looking at his arm and he's like, man, you ever had sweat coming out? And it's like sweat towers <laughs> on your sweat. Yeah, that's funny, <laughs> but then when you want to hear some songs and dude's playing in the wrong key so bad the violinist left the stage like shaking her head, that's pretty bad. Yeah, I'd say for a single set, uh, the Modest Mouse set was a bit of a letdown. Uh, if I was just going to see them exclusively, I probably would have left pretty disappointed. Uh, given the context of it being a whole festival, I guess it didn't bug me as much because I'd already had a really full day and had a, like a really fun day, so it was kind of hard to bring me down from that. Plus, Modest Mouse wasn't like the reason I bought the tickets. It, they weren't one of the acts that I like had to see. So, I mean, it was a little bit, I guess it was a little bit disappointing, but I don't think it really took away from the weekend for me, personally. Uh, I was... I was pretty disappointed by Modest Mouse, but I think Houndmouth made up for it for me. Um, I was real worried about how they were going to play since they lost um, Katie. Well, yeah, they lost Katie, uh, and I didn't know how that was going to play out because a lot of the songs she pretty much she does lead vocals in it. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple times they just kind of skipped over it and did some crowd interaction with it, which was all right. And their newest stuff, I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of. But they played a lot of old stuff, and yeah, it was it was real sweet. Yeah, I definitely prefer their two, first two albums over what they've released since Katie's left the band. Um, I will say I was very, very happy with the amount of saxophone they added in. <laughs> At first, I was against it, but then I was like, you know what? I think I like that saxophone. I can I can handle that. You know, man, I always say you can never have too much saxophone. It's it's a fact. At any point in time. It's saxophone is a beautiful, 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 beautiful thing. All right, so after uh, after Houndmouth, like, I think they were probably the big band that I really enjoyed. They're like, what would you say was your big band that you, you really enjoyed? I mean, when I first saw the lineup and I had to buy my, and it was time for me to buy my tickets, uh, the big bands for me that made me want to go see them was I wanted to see White Reaper again. Yeah, I was going to uh, miss that. I really wanted to see White Reaper again. I was really wanted to see The War on Drugs. Uh, I was a, I'm a pretty big fan of The War on Drugs. Uh, I really wanted to see Vance Joy again. I had seen him about two or three years ago at the waterfront, and I was really interested in seeing them again. I also really wanted to see Trampled by Turtles. Yeah. Um, I hadn't really heard of them until that show, but I liked them a lot. That was... Mm -hmm. A lot of banjo, and I was yeah. I was feeling that. It was a boot scooting good time, <laughs> if there's ever been one. <laughs> yeah, uh, I did I did want to see Houndmouth. I was a little weary, 
but I'd heard, but I've listened to them for a few years now. A lot of my friends are pretty big fans of them, and they'd seen them live in the past when they had Katie. Uh, right. So I myself really wanted to go see them. Although, I guess I didn't get as close or really get as into it as I initially thought I would. But from where I was sitting and kind of listening to it, I was still really vibing along with it, and I I really enjoyed that concert. Yeah, you should have came up where, where we were. We were right up at the front. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a good time. Were there any, like, surprises for you, like, bands that you'd never heard of that you'd stumbled upon, you were like, oh, wow, I really enjoyed that? Um, well, yeah, like, the ones, mainly the ones I talked about, like, Courtney Barnett, I didn't, hadn't really heard of her, Trampled by Turtles. Um, yeah, so, uh, Chris, Chris Steele, um, I did not know he was the lead singer of the Punch Brothers, and I had listened to I, I, he used to be in a, a band I listened to a long time ago, and then he did a bunch of solo work. And actually, a song that I really like of his is he did a cover of Heart in a Cage by The Strokes, but it's like a bluegrassy cover. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed it. It was pretty good. He's, he's real big on the mandolin, um, but yeah, I enjoyed that band. I was surprised to see him up there because I had no idea, and it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I missed that concert. I don't remember where I was at the time. Uh, but I did hear some good things about it. Uh, one, another, I guess, band or person, I guess they kind of go by both, that at the time when I bought the tickets, I didn't know about, but I learned about right before uh, Forecastle was Ron Gallo. Um, he, the lead singer is Ron Gallo, but they also refer to the band as Ron Gallo, so I don't know if it's a he or a them, but regardless... <laughs> Whatever you want. They put on a really fun <laughs> show. <laughs> uh, you know, they don't take themselves too seriously up on stage, and they have fun with the, like the crowd interaction. Uh, it was really early in the day on Sunday in the rain, which I thought just kind of added to the just kind of ridiculousness of their onstage antics. And they just they were just having like a really a really good fun time. Yeah. Up there, although I was really disappointed when he didn't come out on stilts during the White Reaper show. <laughs> Uh, I'm always disappointed when I don't see people on still. As, 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 as he has hinted at doing in the past, but you know, other than that, you know, he had a he had a really good show. Uh, yeah, it might be it might seem a little odd, but I'm pretty sad that I missed T Pain. Like I thought that would be pretty funny to watch. Like <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, this is my second festival of the year with T Pain there, and the second time that I've had to miss him. And honestly, I kind of hate myself for it. Yeah, but the war on drugs was you shouldn't admit that definitely yes. worth it. I guess. I mean, like, I don't know. It was one main reason that I had an issue, and this might be a forecastle every year thing. That I just don't know about because it was my first year going. Is heading over to the stage where T Pain was. I felt like I was gonna be on some sort of child predator list because everybody was like 16 years old and just like really just it was. I was like, nah, I can't do this. That is that's too weird. The dim yeah. the dim the demographic of Four Castle, it does have a bit of a, a younger vibe. Uh, just. It's in a city, so you're bound to have you're there's not there's no travel, there's no camping, so there's gonna be younger people, you know, high schoolers. That's so fair. You will you will run into that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not really just hey, you're uh, like a young girl that wants to fit in and, you know, get dirty, get high, and put a bunch of like sparkly shit on your body, go to forecast. Yeah, there was there's an excessive amount of glitter. <laughs> and <laughs> just, just too much. So much, yeah. it so was, much glitter. <laughs> Like these so like, people, I think there's, I think there's still glitter on my arms in places that I don't even know why it's still there, but <laughs> yeah, like it just, it just appears there, and I was you like, I thought I glitter. washed it off. That's glitter is for life. Yeah, it's, it is. There's it is a reason it, it is, is called the herpes of craft supplies. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, away. I didn't know it was called that, yeah, but now I know. It's always with you. <laughs> you don't get rid of glitter. <laughs> well, I know you were pretty disappointed by Modest Mouse. Were there any other bands that you were like? Mm, maybe you wouldn't see again, or you know, maybe they just really went and didn't do it for you. Um, not really. No, uh, I would feel uncomfortable paying to go see Modest Mouse on their own based on that show. But a lot of the other bands that I saw, uh, yeah, I'd see them again. Uh, I, I actually now that a lot of them I didn't know about before, so now that I know about them, I'll be even more interested because now I've listened to them, I know their songs more. So. Mm -hmm. It's it's a completely different concert experience when you don't know a band and when you do. So, 
No, I, def- I definitely agree with that. When, uh, whenever you're discovering new new artists that you never listen to or that you kind of accidentally stumble upon in a festival setting, you know, you just sometimes you'll just be like, I don't know what I'm going to do for the next hour. You just kind of wander off and you'll find something and sometimes it's really hit or miss because you'll either really vibe with it or you'll you'll just you'll just lose it. You'll just walk away. Yeah. Yeah, you know? and I think a lot of times too though the crowd that you're watching with kind of plays into some of that too. So even if I think even if I had heard a band there for the first time that I didn't necessarily care for, I would probably listen to them again just because the setting is going to be different and mm-hmm. some 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 of those crowds are they were just 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 too much for me. Yeah, I get that. And also, I got distracted by those macaroni browers. <laughs> I, I mean, the the food there is is quite distracting. You know, I had some like loaded waffle fries, and that was really the big thing that uh, distracted me from being getting my full undivided attention to Houndmouth, because I was just going in on some waffle fries because I hadn't eaten in, it, I hadn't eaten in like a day and a half. Yeah, <laughs> and it is. Uh, I was very surprised that they served more than just PBR too because I was going in thinking that it was just strictly PBR and I was like, oh man, I don't know about this. Right, and uh, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, I actually found an IPA that I can't remember but it's, uh, Sierra Nevada makes it and it was it was pretty good. I liked it a lot. And I don't uh, normally care from Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, there was Torpedo. They had another one too but they sold out of it. Um, I can't remember what it was though but it was really good. Hot <laughs> Pays probably. That sounds right. Uh, I was yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by that and the food, except for the one taco truck that tried to give me corn tortilla tacos. Oh no, no, <laughs> it's too dry. Can't can't do it. Yeah, so I think like my big takeaways were I'm pretty excited for next year. I'm not gonna wear fish flops again. That was a mistake. But I'll probably do a lot more listening to the bands before I go. I think that'll help with your experience at Forecastle if you've never been before. Is listen to the bands before you go and then even if you don't it'll still be okay but like it probably would have been more enjoyable for me if I would listen to some of those bands first no I definitely agree uh, listen to as much as you can I know a lot of times before various festivals people will put together online uh, kind of like a best of of each artist together and then from there you can kind of dive deeper into artists that you may right. not know of as much, um, but of course you, you know, you're gonna want to see the artists that you do know about that you are already fans. Sure. Of. Yeah. Um, that and it's extremely easy to get free food if you just make a bizarre combination of food. I, I got free food every day, <laughs> every day. First it was buffalo chicken and hot dogs, uh, the macaroni and bratwurst, and then something else I can't remember. But every day I got free food. They, they love it. Hey, I don't know why. Just weird them out. That's a pro tip. They can't <laughs> They can't do anything if they're too weirded out. <laughs> yeah. But all in all, I'd say it was a really positive experience. Yeah. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing some of these people again, uh, and as well as going back in the future. And also, if you're not real heavy into drugs, stay away from Party Cove. That was a mistake. First, that was a rookie mistake. <laughs> Won't do that again. Yeah, if you're not in high school and you don't like drugs... If you're not real cove, heavy just... into DJ Glitter Tits, it's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> give, give it a rating on 1 to 10, 5 being average, 10 being I'm going to follow these bands around the uh, country. Uh, Adjust your score for the sweaty ass yes, correct. Yes, yeah. and Glitter. <laughs> uh, I would, I think overall I would give it an 8 just because of all the new music that I'm going to listen to outside of there, and I will actively probably go to some other shows based off of that. Um, yeah, I'm taking away the two points because of the Party Cove misadventure. Um, way too much glitter. So just just far too much. Uh, but, like, it was all right. What about you? Uh, I think I'm going to give it probably a 7.5-ish. Oh, somewhere along. Well, it was really enjoyable and really good, um, aside from, of course, some of the the issues that you're going to run into in any any festival setting, especially one based in a city. But the other thing structurally that always kind of irks me about Forecastle that uh, I feel like not all other festivals kind of run into is the fact their scheduling is very much they do a lot of overlapping yeah so it's very so if you want to be really up close for a band you have to really, like really commit to that band uh, and you have to kind of give up around you because a lot of the sets will run 
10 minutes into the next one and that one will run 10 minutes into the next one and then even you have sets even running into the headliner sure yeah and so like you're gonna have that everywhere but i feel like forecastle has that like especially because there's only three main stages and then like a smaller stage off to the side and so i mean i know they have their rules and their laws about uh outdoor events going so late and they can only start so early right but i feel like you know that but but i feel like that's more of a like just because that they do well with the confines their work that they have to work within but because they have those they suffer so you can either see a lot of bands but you're not going to get super close or you can see very few bands and actually have good seats yeah and so that's kind of the sacrifice you have to make more so i feel there than at other bigger festivals with more uh, time for in wiggle room. Yeah, I feel like you got to pick the bands you want to see ahead of time and basically plan your day around them. And mm-hmm. if you're okay with only seeing a couple songs from this artist because you want to see a full set from this one, like that's just a sacrifice you have to make with Forecastle. And that did kind of suck, but it, it turned out all right, I think. All in all, I think it turned out really well. And I really enjoyed myself and I would definitely look into going next year if the lineup is something that I'm interested in. Yeah, and another thing I forgot to touch on too, there's all kinds of free stuff. Like, you can get free sunglasses in addition to that food, and also if you find the shark guys, you can get free lighters, free t-shirts, free bouncy balls, they got everything. You're the shark guys? <laughs> yeah. Like the ones you danced with Katy Perry? No, no, no. no, no, no. Shark. Like oh. S H A R T. Oh, it's, like oh. like, it's a it's yeah. a it's a it's a custom T shirt. Uh, yeah, they websites. they turn like if you have T shirts from a concert that don't fit you anymore, they'll turn it into art for you, and then like you can frame it and stuff. But they were everywhere and had giant yellow balloons that said "shard" on them. You won't miss them. <laughs> Follow that balloon, you get all sorts of free stuff. There's an old man in a diaper, walking around in a shark shirt. Yeah, he's just he's there every year. He's yeah. a great guy. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely a lot of a lot of hipsters and hippies. But yeah, but overall, I would, I would go again. I had a good time. Yeah, definitely go again. All right, well, uh, that's our episode. Uh, that's our personal reviews of Forecastle. If you'd like to see some more concert reviews, you can go ahead and check out the channel for some more concert updates. Uh, I'm Seabass. And I'm Catfish. And this has been Heavy Metal Bake Sale. See you later, guys. <laughs> I'm awkward at the end, Joe. You gotta say thanks <laughs> hey.